thing is like, look at Ramon Deckers. Ramon Deckers went over everybody up in Thailand and he was their size. Who knew I would make it this far? They hated, they never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah, Mayweather with the defense. I don't care what a critic got to say. I got him picking up the pieces. Got me, you really playing with your life. I'm about to come and run it all back. I'm the new ever about to snap back. You ain't fitting for it because you won't care. If you have watched the cult film Kickboxer from 1989, you'll probably remember that it's a story about a young kickboxer from the Western world moving to Thailand to fight the best kickboxers in the world. It's a movie starring John claude Van Damme as the main character who pursues kickboxing and Muay Thai training in Thailand to avenge his brother. By the way, we're gonna, we're gonna do a kickboxer too. Oh, you're uh, gonna do a kickboxer too? Yeah. I'm the first in line. I yeah. really will. Who was paralyzed in a fight against the Muay Thai champion, Tong Po, although they are all fictional characters. Yeah, With uh, Batista, GSP, uh, right. Alain Moussi, um, all good actors are gonna be a cool movie. One still... thing that is certainly accurate for Thailand is that this country is a factory for producing elite kickboxers and Muay Thai champions. <laughs> An average Muay Thai practitioner in Thailand trains in this sport even before learning how to read. In the past, an average white kickboxer from the Western world would not stand a chance against an elite Muay Thai kickboxer. Them Thai fighters, lad, that are some of them. They start fighting from the age of six, seven, eight, and they're fighting every week. Who trains six hours a day and has over 100 fights on his resume. Same thing as kickboxing, more or less, Muay Thai. It's the hardest. It's the hardest it's of, a, of all of them. It all changed with the Dutch kickboxer who moved to Thailand and beat the Thai fighters in their own game, proving to the Thai nation that European boys can fight too. Meet the Mike Tyson of kickboxing. He was the Thai boxer that I shaped my own fighting style to. No jabs, just everything hard and effective. Ramon Dickers, who shares the life story of a fighter that resembles Von Damme's character in the kickboxer movie. Hi, I'm his... Ramon Dekkers. I hope you like this video. And this is the story of my life. From his home Netherlands to the origin of Muay Thai, Thailand, we will glimpse his battles and journey to the top of this legendary fighter. Imagine you are a Sambo practitioner. or a wrestler somewhere in Europe or the Americas. You decide to move to Russia to challenge the Russians in Sambo or the Dagestanis in wrestling. You see so many warriors coming from Dagestan. Like, mm. they're very strong. There's some genetics. That would be the boldest move one could pull off, considering that beating a nation in its own game is generally not a walk in the park. Ramon later in life, the Mike Tyson of Thai boxing. He was an incredible person in and outside the ring. The Thailand is the birthplace of Muay Thai. And fighting against a Thai fighter in this sport is the same as trying to wrestle a shark in the ocean. Deckers was renowned for his willingness to go abroad and challenge the Thai champions in their own country. Ramon Deckers fight. If you're someone who is, uh, you're, you're not aware of Muay Thai. Deckers was born in Breda, the Netherlands, on September 4th, 1969. His they called him the, the Mike Tyson of Thai boxing. That's how powerful he is. This country is known for producing elite level kickboxers, and Ramon was no exception. Just do yourself a favor and Google your Ramon Decker. Kickboxing wasn't the first martial art that Decker started training at. It was the gentle art of judo that he was introduced to at the age of 12. But the dad's been fighting since he was a kid, all the way up into stadiums, and then he'll have a kid and he'll just train him. But shortly after, he switched to boxing. Ramon. While training in boxing, the Dutch legend realized that the striking aspect of martial arts was his forte and to satisfy his appetites. They are completely different and there's some things that you can do in boxing that you just cannot do in MMA. He started training in Muay Thai under the former Dutch champion, Cor Hemmers. As every great fighter has a brilliant coach and mentor, Hemmers would later become his stepfather and tutor that would lead Deckers through his journey. Deckers started his career with a spectacular knockout against an already established opponent. Ramon Decker influenced so many fighters and they kind of started their journey based on the Diamonds journey. And Andre Masseurs, followed by more victories, most of them by knockout, the fearless style of the Diamond and the Mike Tyson power he possessed got the local fight community's attention. <laughs> 
This led him to fight for the MTB and Dutch Championship, where Ramon proved more formidable than the title holder Ronkison, knocking him out with a high kick to win the 1987 championship. Although his first loss was by a decision against the French fighter Andre Richard Nam, a year later, Deckers will have the chance to rebound in a rematch. On February 27, 1988, the Dutch fighter fought Richard Nam again, who was the reigning champion at the time. Deckers won this EMTA European Championship by knocking out the French fighter in the fifth round. All you have to do is go and watch the, this guy fight. He was absolutely fearless, and his technique was picture perfect. Ramon ran through all noteworthy opponents for the next two years, earning two European Championship titles by the time he was 20 years old. Besides the knockout power, the other reason why Deckers is the Mike Tyson of kickboxing is that both these warriors became champions at 20 years old. He, he was a multiple-time champion, and Ramon Deckers was just ferocious. By 1988, the Dutch fighter beat the well-respected champion Moncordum Seeching to take the international Muay Thai Association belt. You go to Muay Thai events and uh, they're rabid and it's like a very deep community of people that... Even though Deckers won the IMTA belt fully deserved with blood and sweat, still, this accomplishment was unrecognized by the Thai community. This is because they considered their native international Muay Thai Federation belt as the real accomplishment in the sport. Challenge accepted. Now Ramon had the IMTF on his radar, but that was a high mountain to climb, and at the top of the hill was the highly respected and accomplished champion, Nam Phan Pehayathan. The fight between the European versus Thai champion took place in Ramon's fatherland in February 1990 in Amsterdam. In uh, 1990, I uh, fought against a Thai called Nam Phan in Amsterdam. I won the world title from him. Millions of Thais watched this fight, eager to see their national hero and Lumpany champion beating the European rising star in his backyard. In a back and forth fight full of action and unpredictability from the beginning, both fighters went aggressively into attack mode, exchanging low kicks. In the world of Muay Thai, in the world of fighting, there's there's guys who have uh, gigantic names. At Punches, elbows, and a variety of Muay Thai techniques. After five exhausting rounds of a slugfest, the Dutch fighter came victorious on the scorecards, winning via unanimous decision. The fact The fact that a foreigner won the most prestigious Muay Thai IMTF title was shocking for the Thais. One does not witness a white European boy beating an elite Thai warrior often. While the smoke was clearing around this fight, Ramon fought another Thai elite fighter, Cherry Sor Wanish, and to make things worse for the Thai community, he beat their fighter via brutal knockout in the first round. It was It was astonishing how top-rated Muay Thai warriors were defeated by a foreigner in their own game, especially as the Dutch kickboxer was considered the underdog in the eyes of the viewers. After defeating the Englishman Thomas McCartney in a Holland vs. England contest, it was time for Deckers to push himself to the limit by moving to Thailand and challenging these world-class kickboxers in their homeland. Sure enough, the Thais could not let their hero Nam Phan Pehayathan be on the losing side, and a rematch was scheduled only three months after these two first met. This time, the fight took place in the mecca of Muay Thai, Bangkok. The fight between these two royals was a full display of beautiful technique and arduous rounds of tactical exchanges and explosive action, even though it looked like Ramon did slightly more to edge Nam Phan on the scorecards. The judges saw the outcome differently and granted the home fighter the victory. Deckers was disappointed and claimed that the Thai judges were biased. And and stole the victory from him. As the UFC president Dana White likes to say today, never leave it to the hands of the judges. The Dutch fighter realized that winning against a tie in his home country on the judges' scorecards is as unlikely as winning an argument against a woke activist today. They would use feelings before reason, so finishing the fight before the final bell was Ramon's priority now. Deckers made Thailand his new home and continued fighting on this foreign soil where he put many victories on his resume. Throw you into the ropes and if you're still on your way down, you get Boom. punted in the head. Primarily by a knockout. The problem was that almost all of the losses he had were by the judge's decision, which Ramon would later blame on the scoring system in Thailand at the time. You're thinking the about scoring, you want to think about it in terms of like a horse race? 
The Diamond was a heavy puncher who preferred an aggressive approach to every fight. However, the scoring system at that time in Thailand was not going in his favor. So if, say, red corner is in the lead, it goes this way, and the blue corner comes back, the dial moves back. Most of his defeats were on points, and if Deckers didn't knock his opponent out cold, it was almost impossible to win a decision victory, especially in front of the Thai crowds and judges. Following his debut loss against Nam Phan, Deckers took on Superlek Sori Sarn, another Golden Era legend. Uh, Ramon was one of the most humble people you know, you know, if you would speak for, with him for like two hours, you wouldn't even know that. Even though he had his hands raised in this fight, the promoters started matching him against many of the big names of the time, like Saint Tianoi Sor Runroy, Sambat Sor Thanikal, Sakman Kal Sitjachak, and, of course, his bitter rival, Koban Lukjame Se Tiang. Although Ramon lost three out of five fights at Lumpany, he was He was the first non-Thai fighter to defeat the kingdom's top warriors at their own game. Ramon Deckers used to throw combinations, who was a, a Dutch guy who became probably one of the most famous ever foreigners. Muay Thai. In real life, Deckers was dubbed the turbine from hell owing to his high-octane style and strong blows, just as the Thai crowd dubbed Von Dam, Nak Subkow in the film Kickboxer. Every great fighter had a rival that would push him to the limit to become a better version of himself. Ramon's biggest rival, and one of the most notable opponents he faced throughout his career was the legendary Thai fighter Koban Lukjame Se Tiang. They play the Thai music and they wear the Mong Kong on their head, they, they bow to their trainer and, and they go out there. Who was coined the cruncher, Koban was a two-time world champion and a multiple Lumpany champion with a fearsome reputation. Hence his nickname. In other words, the real-life Tong Po, Dickers had already attained stardom and success on the world stage. However, he was the first white person to, to beat the Thais. He was such a role model. And, and One of the main reasons why the Dutch kickboxer became a superstar is his legendary fights against Coben in a series for the ages. To fight in Thailand, one of the most successful in the lower weight classes especially. Between 1991 and 1993, Ramon and Coben went to a slugfest four times. The rivalry between these two warriors became one of the greatest and most renowned in Muay Thai history. They first met in April 1991. The Thai fighter proved to be the better fighter that day, knocking Deckers out with a vicious hook in the first round. Never. <laughs> Nevertheless, in less than four months, Ramon will rematch Coben in the notorious Lumpany Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand. This time, the Dutch champion knew that if the fight goes to a decision, it would favor the home fighter. To avoid such a scenario, Deckers went into that fight like a man on a mission, viciously knocking Coben out with a nasty right cross in the first round. He's These two will collide again in the following year, and this time Ramon did not manage to finish his rival before the final bell. And and he lost that fight on the judges' scorecards. Finally, when they met for a fourth time in Paris, France, in 1993. The Diamond claimed the victory, evening the score as 2-2. Two to two. The Muay Thai and kickboxing communities worldwide consider the series of fights between Deckers and Coben among the best rivalries of all time. Because More elite version of kickboxing. Yeah, yourself. because it's elbows and knees and a lot of clinch work. Ramon's career continued to flourish, and another brutal fight that would secure Deckers' name in the history books was against the Thai legend or a no poor Mewing Uban. This fight is one of the best Muay Thai fights of all time, and Ramon gave the Thai fighter some hell, even though he wasn't considered to be in the best shape when they collided. And a lot of dumping where they trip you and slam you to the ground and... Deckers initially retired on March 18, 2001. Nevertheless... Is there a special moment you can describe it? Uh, no, I cannot describe it, but it's very special. Believe me. He couldn't stay away from combat and returned to fight in the K-1 competition against the UFC veteran. You never see like Thai, like Thai fighters in UFC though, do you? That's because they all do Thai. Yeah. Dwayne Ludwig. Ludwig holds the record for the second fastest knockout in UFC history. Really oh, 
Although Ramon's left arm was compromised, he still managed to defeat the American while knocking him down in every round. As a As of May 2006, the kickboxing legend retired from the sport for good. We have a lot of guys that are really good, but I think Ramon is one of the guys that really opened the door for international kickboxing. One thing that genuinely made Deckers outstanding is the courage and determination he had to move to foreign soil. You could look to a, to a Ramon, you can see, you can hear, you can look at him, but the problem starts when you feel him. And the success he was able to have in Thailand, he challenged the best Thai fighters in their game, which earned him tremendous respect. And his aggressive fighting style mixed with Mike Tyson-like head movement earned him the reputation of being a killer. Deckers found success because he hit hard. It's totally different, but uh, I like this style. It's, it's my style also. Uh, I'm not like a European fighter. I, I, I fought totally different. Had a high level of stamina and used subtle head movements, head movement that resembled the teachings of Cus D'Amato. Yes, a uh, degree of his peeling all that dirt and stuff that... This was an unseen technique for Thai fighters, and many struggled to adapt to the long power combos and slick head movement. By the time he retired, his record had reached 186 wins in 224 fight appearances. One of the, the biggest, the greatest fighters we will ever see. With an incredible stat of 95 knockout victories, unfortunately, tragedy struck on February 27, 2013, when the legendary fighter suffered a heart attack at 43. As a true legend and ambassador of the sport, his legacy will live forever. Rest in peace, champ.